In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the good, the bad, and the frustrating mechanics that comprise second front. The bulk of this video will be me playing through the recon by force scenario, where I discuss the tactics, strategies, and methods I'll be using to overcome the German force. So I feel like I'm justified in making this video because I played through a significant portion of the intro scenarios as you see here. And I feel like you don't need to play through all 48 scenarios to have really a hard opinion on a game or a specifically second front. So we're going to go to the recon by force scenario. We're going to take a quick look at our order of battle. As you see, we have a small little American platoon taking on a really small contingent of German operators. So we're going to hit the play button. That's going to bring up our recon by force description and we're going to hit continue. So the one thing a lot of new players are going to come in contact with is they want to play this tactically, especially if you're a viewer of my channel. You're going to want to play this in like a tactical way where you can overcome, suppress the enemy, shoot, move, advance, do all of those things you would do in a normal war game. Unfortunately, and that's not any slight towards second front, that's not how this game is designed. It comes down to a lot of RNG. You have several mechanics like pinned, broken, routed, KIA, things like that. All of those are in this game, but they don't work as you think they would. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our platoon right here. As you see, it has a two-star second lieutenant, Roberts. He's commanding these three platoons at this moment in time, and we have a machine gun. So that two-star means we have an increased accuracy. So we want to move up to the top of this hill, and this machine gun is mainly going to be our base of fire. It's going to provide a lot of cover, and we have a few decisions we need to make. So what a lot of new players are going to run into is they're going to want to run as fast as they can. What's not mentioned is when you run, you lose a significant amount of your firepower, and we don't really know what's going on in this area. There could be hidden units. We have no idea what hostiles lie in wait for us. So we always want to move, mostly to a position of cover at this moment in time. So we're going to crest these two hills, which we need, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to travel through the woods, and we're going to get on top of this hill. Our next turn, we're obviously going to advance, possibly to the right, is the turn the way I want to go. This platoon over here is not going to be able to move as far as you see, and so we're actually going to run them. If we run them into this valley, they're going to lose us. It's going to cost extra movement points to get out. So that's one thing we need to consider. So let's just move really far, and we're just going to run them into this battle. When you run, if you look over here in this lower right-hand corner, you're going to see that this unit ha now has reduced firepower. Whereas if we click these units, they should not have reduced firepower since they just walked. But maybe the hills played a role in that. Not quite sure why they have that reduced firepower. I'll reference the manual again. That's specifically why we walked that way. Right now, the Germans are making their moves, as you see, and now we can advance or move. Right here, we have our firepower is back to normal. We're going to move up one position, and we're going to use these tree lines as we move our units through. We're going to lose some points, movement points while doing that, but that's just something we need to do. In these first couple turns, it's going to feel extremely long because we have no contacts, and we're trying to feel out where we're going without getting punched in the face, right? We don't want to stumble into an ambush and immediately get routed. We don't want to stumble into the flat gun that's going to be over here on the ridge line that has a reload speed of 50% and is just going to ha fire on your units a significant amount of times. So we're going to continue cycling through our turn. The Germans are going to use their advance phase, and we're still going to determine which way we want to go. We know that right here, this is our ridge line, right along here. If we grab our line of sight, ideally, and right, the victory points begin ticking away, new reinforcements have arrived. We're gonna do our line of sight, and I've I've scouted this mission out before. And as you see, this is this is one of the key pieces of terrain right here, is what is that we want to get to right here. It gives us line of sight over everything, but also it puts us it's extremely vulnerable. So we don't really want to go there, but that's just one spot that has a good little advantage point for us. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna grab our truck with our mortar. One thing, one complaint about the mortars is that it always needs line of sight. Ideally, it doesn't really matter where we go with this. We can either traverse this tree line and come in contact with a hostile, or we can kind of group up with our units over here, which is, I think, what we're going to do. One thing you'll make note of is that this vehicle right here cannot go through any trees right here. And if we take a look at all these trees, we can see that this vehicle is never going to pass this point. So we follow this tree line right here, move fire. We'll do our turn in a second. We can observe, the observe that these trees always block our path forward. See, and this is 
possibly the furthest we can do it. There's always a wall of trees. So this vehicle is never going to extend beyond this ridge line. So the best thing you can do with this vehicle is we're going to keep moving forward. And remember, we have a machine gun. We want to have it like a good little base of fire. We're going to do our initial walk. Then I think we're going to walk again. We're not really checking line of sight right now. We're kind of getting too far away from this unit. And we did suffer a significant firepower. So even if we do walk, we do always lose firepower. One thing to make note of. And we're just going to hit next. And we're just going to stay along this path until we get up here. Once we're through these trees, we're going to run into issues. And we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. We're going to advance. Now we have a decision to make, right? We're about to crest this hill. We're at a disadvantaged position. Something that's always frustrating in this game, in my personal opinion, right? Because if we take a look at it, there's no way to really gain advantage over this position, right? And that's one of my frustrations in this game is you're always fighting from like the worst, absolute worst possible position. And you're fighting to gain the like absolute position you need to gain fire superiority. So once we crest this hill, it's going to put us basically in the line of sight to any hostiles that are over here. So we take a look at this hedge right here. We know this hedge is going to provide them a bit of cover, uh, and, and they're going to be able to see over it. So we grab line of sight. This is all the area we can s they can see. If we move into this position, we can continue advancing upwards. But we're always, that puts us kind of out of line of sight right there. So this might be a good position. We can just advance over here to the right and just continue up and get line of sight up on that hill. So realistically, it doesn't really matter which way we go. And that's just what we're going to do. So we're going to turn our line of sight tool off. And we're just going to keep advancing up. And then we're possibly going to split two of our platoons from the squad on this next turn. You've already advanced. And you guys open, close, hatch. Open, hatch, close, hatch. Next. We're going to try and get this unit all the way up to this tree line. And then we're going to dismount them. That's going to allow us to get our mortar into position to begin hammering away at units. And this is one of the downsides about the, this intro scenario is it's so, so long just to get started. We're already on turn three. We're beginning taking away points. And if this is one of the first ones you play and you start seeing these points drop and you don't really understand what's going on, you're going to immediately like feel bad, right? And especially if you walk into the ambush that's also waiting for us at some point because all the units are hidden, it's just going to be a bit of a scenario you're not going to enjoy. Once we get to the combat phase, we can talk more about the bad. But I mean... In my opinion, the good's really good. Like, I know a lot of people don't like the graphics, and there it are a bit of accessibility issues. There's not really a colorblind mode. I do believe the developer should focus on a colorblind mode, at least allow people to start playing the game. All right, what we're going to do now, this unit's going to move. We're going to check line of sight is what I believe is better, and we're going to try and secure this tree line. So let's do that. We're going to go tree, tree, and see what we can do just for that unit. That gives us a bit of line of sight. We're going to walk. Once we walk, and we're going to stop. That's perfectly fine. What's their line of sight from there? They can kind of provide cover. They can't really see anything beyond that. This is probably the best position. Maybe we can advance a platoon over there. So now we need to decide what we do, because there's no way for us to ever observe anything beyond this hill line. Do we secure this? little valley and then push upwards and then try and secure these forests right here or this birch and then push over i'm not I'm, i didn't really discuss it but um i not i don't i'm not a fan of approaching this left side one your units spawn all the way over here on the right and then you also have rubble and there's really really no cover i mean at least there's a bit of cover in some valleys and also the line of sight getting on you basically ends once you cross this valley so what were we doing turning our line of sight off and discussing why we're going to move so let's just click off i want our machine gun i want to move a platoon first i want him to crawling is not so oh i didn't want to move you right there that's fine i want our commander to stay with our machine gun the reason why we want i guess everyone's joining the party because i'm not really microing our units correctly all right, these units are going already moved, and this guy is going all the way up here. All right. Once we secure this ridge line with the bulk of our force, we are going to dismount these units, move our mortars into position, and hammer on any units that we come across. Next phase, still no contacts. Still a reason why this is not one of the best intro scenarios. And there we go. 
We stood. Good thing. I believe we crawled up there, so we maintained that cover bonus. That's actually really, really, really good for us. I don't think there's really any way to get this advantage over here. Um, we can try and advance closer. And then we can hammer this unit on our next turn. Actually, we're, it's too close. Now it's going to their turn. That was a major mistake for us right there. It's going to go into the move and fire phase. And we moved. At least we have this commander right here. But we're possi possibly going to get a few broken units right there. We should have split them up. Major, major mistake right there. I don't do a lot of microwing with my platoons. I should split things more so they don't get checked so hard. So... 36, all right, so let's discuss some of these percentages. This is where it all comes down to the bad, right? So we have a 35% chance to break, 36% chance KIA, and then a few others, 3% pen, things like that. Not really sure. So if we right-click this unit and we say, let's engage them. So we should, one-third of a chance of getting them, at, like, damage. We get a solid KIA, broken. I'm just going to say that's good don't typically play out like that but we're going to take what we get we're going to keep moving forward i played a lot of the scenarios they're being routed that's one of the more frustrating things commander's routed he's going to run away it's their advanced phase we're going to continue pushing this ridge line i know we're going to stumble into that flak 88 or flak 38 whatever it is turn four failed to rally still are moving fire so how do we want to go about this, right? This machine gun is really critical to us. So we always want to pair this machine gun. I don't like how that works. Off. Turn off. Right? I want our machine gun to stay with us. Right? Then I want to click on this platoon, and I want to walk him. See, look, they still lost firepower even when they crawled. I don't think that's correct. I don't know if that's the platoon. They should have. I need to review the manual. All right, the real question is, do we really want to move down this hillside? Or do we want to engage this unit? Let me think. Is it worth trying to eliminate this 22% chance, so a little less than a quarter percent? We'll come back to that. This unit's going to move all the way up behind where we know safe. So one thing we need to make note of is this unit cannot run next turn. As we just ran up this hill, we cannot run across this valley. So what we need to do is find that flak 38, in my honest opinion. This unit can begin dismounting. So we're just going to dismount now. I want to select these guys. And they really can't move that far. Bummers. And they're going to be moving forward. That's our next platoon. We have another commander we need to work with. All right, we advance. There it is. And we just discovered. Solid miss. We have eyes on the flak 38 right there. So if we hover over this unit, good thing it didn't get reloaded. If you ever take a look in that top left corner, you're going to see that that green circle, 50%, that means every time it shoots, it has a 50% chance to reload. Really powerful weapon system that we do not want to play with. So if we take a look at what they can see, grab it. We're just going to observe it. If I can grab my line of sight. We need to figure out, we want this to be red when we advance across this, these planes. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit, I believe our turn's mostly over. Everyone mood fired. Can you engage? No real reason to engage. Next. Fire phase, they're going to run away. Oh, Jesus Christ. And apparently we came across what looks to be a machine gun. They routed to their commander, so they have a possibility to both get rallied next turn. So what we're going to do, do we have line of sight right here? We do. We're going to maintain position right there. We're going to advance this unit forward. So we have two really bad threats we need to deal with right here. We have a machine gun in this position. We have a Flak 38 in this position that has really good line of sight on us. We're going to pull this unit back, and we're going to move them to this birch. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I feel like that's the best method for us. These units are going to maintain their position and they're going to fire onto this machine gun next turn. These units are going to keep advancing forward and we're going to look for a line of sight for our mortar. And really the only good line of sight, right, is going to be either this position, this position on the flak 38. 
So if we could ever get this unit into position to drop mortars on that gun, if it's even really worth it, worth that assault, we'll talk about that when we get there. So we could move and then advance and then fire. He rallied, outstanding. We failed, we rallied one. Move into the move fire, right? So what, we're, what are we going to do? Right, it's their turn. They're going to engage us. He's going to run away. He's going to shoot. It. He no longer has line of sight on any of our units, so we're fine. Machine gun's pulling back. All right, that's really, really kind of okay for us. So what do we do? Kind of sucks, actually. No one has line of sight on this guy. Now that I'm thinking about it. So our next move is trying to figure out how to get across this. And this comes down to the meat wall tactic, right? We need to bait this guy to shoot at us twice and then just freely move our commander all the way across this and just let these two troops break. We'll discuss that when we get there. We have no we have no fire order, so there's really nothing for us to worry about. They can advance. They better not advance into that tree line. That's some cheese. That's just some cheese, right? Run away, run back, skip our fire phase. So now we have to deal with that. So we have a full squad rallied right here. We have a flak 38 hammering down on us. Who? How do we get line of sight on this position? What can he see? What can you see? We're going to ignore the flak 38 for right now. We're just going to deal with this machine gun. That's really what's going to hold us up. So you're going to move into this position. I feel like there's no reason to like meet wall this objective twice. We're going to pause right there. 39% chance to break, 25%. 13. All right. Taking the 39. Okay. So, this unit's going to advance. No, we're not going to advance. They're not going to do anything. You're going to move. Do you need to move there? What can you see? Nothing, but we need you to move there, right? That's what we want. That's completely different than what we wanted to do. Right, you move there. So, and then down here, do we want to... Who has a move? So what I'm trying to do is this is going to shoot at us twice unless it gets a reload, which it could be three, four times. The reload lottery is what we're trying to not hit. See how our units are red? We want this to be red over here. So if he shoots twice, he should go red when he engages us. Or once. You know what? Do we want to roll the dice? We feel unlucky? Let's do it. He can't. He can. So basically, we need this commander to have this extra movement point. We don't want our com We don't want... I mean, what does it matter? We break our commander. What's the worst that could happen? He ain't going to get KIA. All right. See? That's what we wanted. Red. Fantastic red. And now we're clear to run. So why why did we do that, right? Why why we do that ridiculous nonsense, right? We had to meet wall this guy, our commander, our one star, our lieutenant captain Robinson. He's one star, and our lieutenant second lieutenant Roberts is two star. Corporal, corporal, not captain, CPT, corporal Robinson. All right, see how this is red right here now? If we didn't engage this machine gun that we broke, who possibly could rally next turn, um, then if we didn't roll that thirty nine percent right there to break that unit. We would have had to have stayed in this position, and this is one of the bad things about it. We would have to have stayed in that position and continued to engage that unit, right? Because we had to engage him because, one, he was providing line of sight over this position from this area, right? Correct? So, essentially, we would have to either meet wall it with two of our guys or just fire on him with our machine gun. The next thing we had to consider was this unit right here, which can only fire once unless he gets the reload, which has a 50% chance. We still have to contest with this unit here in a moment, and we're going to do that shortly. So the question we want to ask ourselves, because it's going to go in their move fire phase, I believe. So they're obviously going to shoot at us with this unit. This unit right here is just going to keep progressing forwards. No reason for him not to. We need to decide how we want to move. So the question is, how, we, we're just going to bait one unit, right? We're going to send one squad this way. And then we're just going to run freely across. This mortar squad, no real re reason to like bait him because he can be really useful later on. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. And we can, can kind of contend with this unit later. Or we can move this mortar squad up one position and try and get a lucky hit on him, right? So we could try that. It's not really a big deal that we do that. 
um, I don't think it's worth it without the captain or whatever. So if we were going to do that, we should have waited and moved this captain back one. And then these guys, we're not going to move at all. We're just going to probably pull this captain up one position, bait him, probably get him KIA or Corporal, Corporal, not Captain, Corporal Robinson, up here, try and get him to d draw some fire, and then the next turn we're going to run these guys across. So these guys aren't going to move anywhere until next turn. These guys are now hidden again, so we basically crawl them wherever we want to crawl them to. They'll be in a good position. So it's going to go into the enemy's move fire. A few things we didn't consider is that he could fire on these guys, instantly break them, and then we lose our meat wall. Doesn't get a reload. Good thing for us. He's continuing to move towards that. Ideally, we want to get rid of this before this commander gets on that position. I figured you would have had line of sight from this area. Is this not deployed? A symbol. What's our reload? Did we get a reload? Right, we knew that was going to miss. We're going to go for the KA on this guy. Toughen. Are you pound sand, bro? This guy's going to like move up in advance. We made that guy stronger. That's like the frustrating part about this game. We forced him to rally when we engaged him. So that that's something we had to consider. That's like an extremely bad thing in my opinion, but okay, guys. Now we're going to turn him into a hero. We'll watch. We're going to toughen him and we're going to turn him into a hero. Jesus Christ. That's like a frustrating mechanic, right? Now, we, now because we engaged that guy, he's instantly rallied. Oh, I guess he's not rallied. He's still routing. I can't see the... The tough and green made me think he was rallied. So I guess that's something cool. All right. Move fire phase. What do we do? We're going to walk this guy. We're not going to crawl because we want to move him again. Gun reload, bro. Oh, that's fine. He's going to route anywhere. That sucks. See how that's yellow? So now we still we still have an issue. What's our reload on that? Like 50% and we're not going to get it? Stand. Not really worth the run right here. You were broken, bro. Was it? Was he not broken? Am I confused on that? I want to see that replay. Did we not talk about how he was still broken after that toughen? I need confirmation in the credits, in the comments. Let me know. So now we're like stuck, right? So let's just let's just throw this all away. Let's grab our green unit, advance. Gun reload. All right, this is this is dumb. I'm sorry, I'm not going to play through this nonsense, right? I'm confused on that one. And I, and yes, I'm going to reload this turn. I wanted to play all the way through, but if we're gonna sit there and like break everyone, break everyone, that unit's rallied. So is this guy rallied? We're only back here because I want to confirm this rally right here. Sorry about that, guys. I'd have to go back one more turn. All right, he's green, which means he's he can engage. If we move this unit up here, right, we're going to be engaged by this. We very clearly know that. So we take the crawl, we maintain the hit, and we get the modifier. What we don't want is for him to get the reload. What we don't want to do now is I'm very certain these guys are broken, but we're going to play that very carefully because they are not broken. So we're going to crawl, advance, engage. I swear they were broken. I need... I swear they were broken. All right. So now here we go. All right. Here's what we need to contend with. There's no reason for him to advance on here. There's no reason for us to gamble with that 50-50 break. So we can either keep playing with this 50-50 nonsense or we can advance this unit and eventually get across. So if we crawl this unit up to here, which is a mistake, then we drop fire, get that aim bonus. We get the lucky reload. Let's see if everything just flips in our favor. Nope. Get that reload once more. All right. Now we're hitting all these reloads. Get the reload. No third reload, but we'll take what we can get. 
All right, never got that bonus. What are we at? We don't really know what we're at for that. 50% 50, 50, 50 chance. So we need to talk to ourselves right here. Do we move this platoon and try and bait the... Is it worth tr not getting that 50-50, right? Is it worth not getting the 50-50? And he's not going to engage us. We don't didn't really lose the modifier just because we crawled, right? That doesn't make sense. Because he can see us from this position. So we grab these regulars. And when we stumble on this, we're getting ambushed. And he's going to engage us with his flak 38. And if we move all four platoons right, right here. And if he gets a reload, he'll shoot them. He'll shoot them. So we really, really have a lot of things to consider. So we could route Lute Lieutenant Roberts over there. Try and get more percentage on. But we're going to just pause, right? There's no reason for us not to. We're going to pause. We don't need to make a move every turn. We don't need to make an offensive move every turn. They got a re no reload, right? Penned. Penned's perfectly fine. We do lose some firepower because we're penned. So we're going to be leaving behind that regular platoon. But we can move them like that. That was a mistake. We're going to get shot. I for always forget we're moving into the um, move fire. All right, so we're kind of stuck here. We're kind of rolling the dice right here. We're still hidden. He didn't engage us when we moved, crawled in that position. So I'm wondering if he's going to fire on us. We are going to have that question mark, that little bit of cover, that hidden. And he's going to hammer us. Did he get the reload? Thank goodness. I really want to review that clip. I swear it said break. Maybe they rallied. All right, we're still going to make this guy's life a nightmare over here. Just back and forth, reload. Really need that hit. Three. All right, that's three mortars. Jesus Christ. All right, broken. Only 17 mortars later. You know what? Let's just shoot some bullets at him. Have a wonderful day, thanks, sir. Did we get a reload on that? No, we didn't. So four mortars later, one turn reload, we can finally cross this bridge. And this is one of the things that I still feels really bad about this uh, intro scenario. It feels like it's been going on forever. Even though we've made like some small little, like we, we really made our way across. We did have to do make like reload that scenario. And I'm not gonna argue that I was right or wrong. Um, like, I'm not above it, number one. Really not above it. I'm reloading a scenario because I'm not going to lose 40 minutes of play time as well as record time, right? So now we have an issue to deal with over here. We finally destroyed our flat cannon, which is broken. Not really destroyed. I don't know if they route out of it. Looks like they're routed out of it. This guy's probably going to head towards his commander. The commander's going to meet them up. They're going to rally. They're going to reload their flat gun. No big deal. Whatever. That's going to happen. Now we have a really good sized force right here. So this unit is hidden. We're going to advance onto this house. Two regular units. Shouldn't be engaged. We're not going to shoot on that on a move fire phase. We don't really have a good... S Do we have a position from here? I don't even think we could see it. Crawl wasn't really that good. So now we have to figure out how to get rid of this unit. They can... S this unit... It's basically a crawling game, right? We don't really get line of sight on it until we... Man, and that's one of the bad things. Like we're always tactically trying to figure out how to get to this position, and every time we need to get to this position, we're just waiting to get punched in the face, right? Does that make sense? This whole time we're playing, so we're going to advance. Let's think of it like this. We advance this guy right here. We advance this mortar team right here. No no real line of sight. Not really a good position. This house is kind of in a, in a little tunnel. We need to basically just crawl up here, either advance if they don't engage us, crawl advance. And that's really just the repetitive nature of this game. So when we think about how we're going to approach this house, and we still have like three platoons, like we still have eight more turns to go. We're on turn seven, an excessively long intro. Makes me feel like it was put here on purpose just to run that two-hour steam time limit, in all honesty. And that really feels bad to me, and that feels like another bad thing I need to mention because both the American scenarios are excessively long. All right, so there's no real, we have no engagement right here. There's nothing to really discuss. What we're doing is we're planning on how we're going to assault this one unit who's basically going to have to fight a whole, 
company of soldiers off. What is that, like five platoons? They're all working to secure their gun, which is outstanding. Might have been best to leave the mortar platoon. And then hopefully we can split off. So what we're going to do, what line of sight does this house have? All right. How do we begin capturing? We need to start capturing two objectives. I want these guys to route down here and into this position. But they want to run across that because it's the fastest way. So we're going to go three. We're going to walk. And we don't really have a way. So he's going to advance into that and hopefully be able to provide fire support. What can he see from here? He can't see anything up there. We have two platoons moving on here. This might have been a mistake. These guys are just going to crawl, right? What's our chances? We can wait till... Um, we can just advance into there that next turn. There's really no reason to fire upon that and give away our position, right? Because it goes into their fire phase next, I believe, is what's coming up. And you're going to begin moving this way. Just like that. So we're basically losing a turn, and they got the reload, bro. Don't pin. Thank God they didn't pin. So basically what's going to happen was we're going to advance. 97% chance to just eliminate them, claim that objective. Right? Claim that one, claim that one, push this hillside. So what's going on basically is we have this house sitting there, ambush, KIA, outstanding. First objective claim. We're going to begin moving on to these next two where we have a uh, flat gun as well as two objectives we need to claim. So it's basically going to take two to three turns to get across this area. They move fire. They're go probably going to man that gun at some point, or they're going to keep avoiding it. They may like move there, do the cover, and then advance into it. The AI tends to just want to stay out of the line of fire, which I completely understand. All right. So they're trying to set up to get into a good position to kind of shut us down. And so we really just need to get into a position to shut them down. Basically, six turns left. We got to move a bit quicker. These are our. This is our team that's going to secure our objectives. They're going to run across in the open. No real reason not to. We didn't really consider any anything right there. We're going to check line of sight, see what these units can see. Basically, they're going to sh cut off a lot of our advance. So we have a few decisions as we deal with this this area. There's really no way to get into position to eliminate them, like safely, which sucks. Even in this house, it doesn't provide much cover, which is still another thing that bothers me. We're always disadvantaged. Always disadvantaged. Every move we make. Every breath we take. So we could bait them. He shoots twice. Is it worth it? Not really, because we could break our units and lose a few turns. So we just move all the way to this, this line right there, right? We just set up for the advance and the fire. So you walk casually into that position. You secure that objective next turn. We check line of sight one more time because I'm blind. We secure this high ground and hopefully with this mortar team. I don't see a reason why not to. They shouldn't be able to engage us unless I always, the color for like the top three kind of sucks. He can't, I guess he can. We got a pinned. Ideally, pinned's not really good for us. Pinned is, like, they do, if we click on this unit, can I click off my unit? We can't really see them, right, up in the upper left. They do lose some firepower when they get pinned. He's going to return fire on us. We do have a commander there. It shouldn't be too effective. They do lose some firepower, which is good. Is this our mortar team? This is our mortar team. We couldn't set up our mortars. So what are we thinking here? We just advance into their zone, advance into their zone, advance into the objective, Right. Then it goes into their move fire. They're going to shoot on us. We have two commanders right here. We should be pretty resistant to it. If we're not, it's going to break my heart. Right. They should have no option to reload. We should be able to break this unit and secure these last two objectives. Hopefully there's no surprises for us as we work our way across this excessively long intro recon force mission. All right. Solid miss. So what's going to happen is we can return fire and we can just have like a heyday. Right. 10% chance. Mortar, 14. Solid miss. Maybe we'll make a man out of them.
All right. So this crew is going to route. I don't remember if commanders can sh can engage you. We're not really going to hopefully discover that. Oh, they're both routed. Who? All right. I hate that we had to restart this mission. It really bothers me, but it's fine. We're still working our way through. And there were a lot of mistakes we made. Like, and that's like one of the things when you're like, oh, let me just gamble. And they turn green. Did he rally? I hope not. Move fire phase. We're going to grab our mortar platoon. I don't really see a reason to not. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's just get reckless, right? Let's just be really, really reckless. Advance. We're going to advance this way and then move in that way. I don't want to go over this hill, crest it, and get shot from that house if that's what's going to happen. And then we're just going to move as fast as we can. So basically, we have one, two, three. We're going to eliminate these last couple of guys, secure this last little ridge line. And we've never bothered with this vehicle. Like, it's completely... We're just going to we'll move over there. Who cares? Can we sh engage anyone? No real reason to do that, right? And so what we're doing, I, I think we're doing really good in this scenario, barring that reset. Um, we're fighting the RNG. We're explaining the RNG. We're talking about the good. We're talking about the bad. The graphics are good. The accessibility, be the lack of accessibility feature is bad. The routing mechanics, good and bad. As you saw way over here, that one mistake we basically broke our, like we shut down our entire advance unless we want to sit here for like another five turns waiting for these units to rally and like and this is something i've been saying a lot on like my youtube videos if we waited five turns for those units to rally and say this flak 38 kept firing on us kia this machine gun unit that we thought was broken that we toughened when we engaged him with our machine gun i don't think units should get stronger when you when you engage them i think they should be re rewarded for the positives that they do but I don't think they should be rewarded for, like, being... And I understand coming under fire and becoming a hero, right? I mean, that's, like, silver stars, bronze stars, all kinds of medals are made that way. You, you like, become a hero. And I understand the thinking behind it, and it makes a lot of sense, right? But, I mean, he didn't really do anything heroic over here. I mean, he held the objective until my units got there. And, I mean, I guess he did shut down our whole advance. So, good and bad. I guess we can look at it from, like, several different directions, like, right... I feel like being more positive makes you a hero and then like being more negative, you're going to be like, okay, well, it's going to feel bad, right? Especially on like the receiving end of it where you, one unit right here basically stopped everything because he was shot at. And that's what we that's why we didn't crest that hill, right? So now we have another hostile to deal with, right? 47% chance our machine guns tearing it up or regular guns close range. Oh, here we go. Here we go. No one has line of sight. All right, we have five turns to drive this one unit out of this house where that we had a 50%, 57% chance of engaging. He's advancing to the first floor. He's going to go into his move fire phase where he's going to engage all four of our units. The unit over there rallied, so we have a commander that needs to deal with. We do not want this unit to get into this house because he's going to make our life basically a living hell. So we have two options here. This unit can't really do anything useful, in my opinion. We're going to move him, though. He's going to advance next turn up onto this hillside. This unit right here. Let's just do this, right? Screw it. What we're going to do is we're going to meet wall this, right? I think that so we move up here. They're going to engage us. They're going to break us. We know that. That's what that's. We didn't expect anything less. Corporal Robinson's going to go up there and he's going to help them. Go, Corporal Robinson. Go, 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 go. Boom. Right there. Meat wall tactic. Now look. We can't do anything. Um, well, we can advance. So if we crawl, we crawl, we engage. Nothing happens. He's going to shoot us. Hopefully he doesn't break all four of our units. As you hear, like, the dread in my voice now that I'm thinking about it. Fine. All fine right there. So now it's our advance phase. This is what we're playing for right here. This is, the m this is what we are playing for. 
So that you can think of this like two separate ways, right? You can be like, you're just going to you're going to maintain right here. I don't want this guy like randomly routing into this house just because he can. And then we're going back four people. So this is what I'm talking about. Basically, we just manipulated the game design right there. This guy moved to the first floor, which prevented us from moving into the house, which was a good block for him. But in the, at the same time, we were just like, okay, we'll just circumvent that. We'll send one platoon up here, then we'll send another platoon up here, basically disabling this guy. And then we'll just walk into the house. The AI did try to stop us, but then we just come into an advanced phase where we just have a 98%, 28% chance, Jesus, 98% chance to eliminate this guy. So we hit next. Basically, we have all four objectives. It's going to run the check. He's going to be eliminated. Everyone's going to stand, get the ambush. Everything's good. Finish this with 215. I don't know if that's good, 225 or bad. Yeah, much better would it. I mean, that's like, okay. I can dig it. So to summarize, we displayed the meat wall strategies. We've displayed how to use advance. We've shown both the good and the bad of the reload. The reload re really played for our favor in one option where we were able to suppress the flak 38. It also played really good in their turn where they destroyed four of our squads. The broken rallied, I'm gonna go review that clip. I don't know if I was broken or rallied. I don't think I would have made that move if I knew if I know I would have made that move if I knew he was rallied, right? Because I talked about it during that first assault. And then we did make a few mistakes. We did accidentally, not accidentally, we moved two platoons in front of the flak instead of one platoon. And either way, it's always a 50-50 a chance to get that reload. So, I mean, he can just sit there and hit a flip of a coin on those Flak 38s. And I think that shows a lot of the good, a lot of the bad. The good, obviously, graphics, the gameplay. If you're coming from a tactical war game, your background, you're not gonna really going to enjoy it. And like, comment, subscribe, guys. This video was 40 minutes long. Jesus, sorry, guys. Sorry, everyone. Peace.